Church, Thomas Burton Centre. Mm -hmm. Hi, there's no microphone, right? So I have to talk really loud? Okay. Um, so I'm Gabe McMorland. Uh, I'm at the Thomas Burton Center. We have a couple, we have a campaign to divest Pittsburgh, asking the city of Pittsburgh to divest from the fossil fuel industry. There's a couple people here from the campaign. Uh, make some sort of noise or wave your arms around. Wanda, Chris, Leah. That's Wanda. Claudia. Claudia. Chris and Leah are here too, even though they're not waving their arms. Thank you. Um, and we also, afterwards, are going to try to chase down every single one of you in this room to get you to sign our petition and tell you more about how you get involved with our campaign. But I want to take a step back from that um, and just talk about what I see as the context, what I think many of you in this room see as the context for all of these things, whether it's education or technology or um, reducing our own consumption through lifestyle choices. I want to suggest that we've had the information about climate change for my entire, literally my entire life. And we've had technology ready to go that could convert us to a renewable energy economy and society for at least my whole adult life and maybe longer than that. So I don't think that we're missing information and technology or any of that. I think that what we are missing and what we need more of is power. Um, who can shout out how you how we get more power? People. People do what? Organize. Yes. He's not a plant. It's, it's true. He just knew that. So that's right. I think what we need to do is is organize and not not just around. I'm really here to plug the divestment campaign, but before that. <laughs> Not just organizing around the divestment campaign. I think there's really important work going on uh, opposing the fracking in this region that we're all being sacrificed to. There's really important work opposing new fossil fuel infrastructure. We're going to have to really organize at a number of levels. But the only way we really make wins on any of these issues, including educating people or um, passing legislation, or improving the success of the renewable energy marketplace. All of that only happens if we can organize with other people and ask our leaders to stand with us as organized people that have built up our own power. And you can see that already. There's states uh, in the Southwest, there's a number of states where ALEC and other fo uh, fossil fuel funded lobbying have pass new laws to make it much harder to install solar on your house or to get refunded from money from uh, electricity that you feed back into the grid. So you can build new technology, they'll rewrite the rules. Uh, how many people, raise your hand if you've heard a commercial on the radio or television advertising the wonders of natural gas from console or range region. Okay, now here's a question. How is that different than a commercial asking you to buy Coke instead of Pepsi or Marlboro instead of Camels or this brand of cheese or bread, right? You don't go to the store and say, oh, I'd like some of that range resources natural gas, right? <laughs> so what that is, is that's a cultural campaign, a media campaign to make society misinformed and misled so they can continue to have their own control over our economy and our politics and even our basic knowledge of what's going on, right? So that's sort of their form of organizing. So that's why I think this organizing, we really have to look at, no matter what angle you're approaching this from or what you're most excited about, it's going to require organizing and building power among ourselves and other people in order to get anything. Um, so our fossil fuel divestment campaign, we're asking the city of Pittsburgh to divest from the fossil fuel industry. At this point, there are more than 180 institutions worldwide, including universities, foundations, um, churches, that have pulled more than $50 billion out of fossil fuel investments. It is already starting to make the industry nervous. Uh, I believe Patriot Energy in their shareholder report just put out that one of their risks 
to the future was the reputation impact from fossil fuel divestment campaigns and the way it was really putting the corporate power and the abuse of corporate power in the spotlight. They don't want it to be seen as an issue where corporations are abusing their power, but it is, and so that's, that's something to really organize around. Um, with fossil fuel divestment, I don't want to go into too much preaching to the choir. I think this is probably a pretty uh, well-informed room about the issue. Obviously, the fossil fuel industry's business plan requires accelerating climate change, dumping huge amounts of toxic pollution right here where we live, and a lot of lobbying on a wide variety of issues, including things well beyond environmental policy, like the minimum wage and protections for unions. Another thing you can look at, and this is the last thing I want to point out about this, a lot of people, when they talk about divestment, have brought up, well, scientists tell us we're going to need to keep almost 80% of the known fossil fuel reserves, the coal and the oil and the gas, in the ground, in order to avoid just complete climate catastrophe. That means that a lot of the assets on the fossil fuel company's books aren't going to be worth any money. Because if you ran a store and someone told you, oh, you're not allowed to sell 80% of the stuff in your warehouse, that wouldn't be a very good financial investment. I think the way to look at that is the fossil fuel companies are saying, we think we have enough power that no one will ever be able to pass regulations that protect people from what we're doing. And we have to look at it as divestment makes sense because we are going to build enough power to pass regulations to protect ourselves and the planet in the future. Right? Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you.